versions. That's not what I was expecting you to ask, but I'll, I'll we'll start with that one. <laughs> I was ready. I had it right here. Dave Biddle. Who's the starting quarterback? <laughs> okay, gonna, gonna have to move that one down, Dave. Um, yeah, third down. Um, you know, we found ourselves this year so far in some uh, third and twos and third and threes that we haven't converted on offense. Um, you know, and we've got to get it fixed. We've got to do a better job of that. Um, you know, we're, um, you know, just been in some situations where we haven't executed very well in those, those situations we, we expect to. And, you know, third and long, third and extra long, different story. But third and medium, third and short, um, we've got to keep drives going. <laughs> Are we doing two questions? Yeah, so um, after, you know, reviewing the film, you know, we've decided that, that Kyle's going to be the starter um, and that, you know, make that distinction. Um, we still plan on playing Devin, but we feel like Kyle has, has really stepped up to, to, and deserves to be the starter. So, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and make that distinction. All right, fourth row right, uh, Cameron Keith Robinson, The Athletic. Ron, when you looked at the film, what, what stood out about Kyle for you to make that decision? Yeah, just the overall uh, consistency that I think he's been playing with. He, you know, he made some, uh, some nice throws. He um, you know, kept the offense going. He... Uh, came out of the gates playing efficient football, and and that's what we're going to look for moving forward. But uh, I would just say overall consistency. When sometimes like the outside narrative is that like it's just some kind of Youngstown State, but when you have a quarterback who's made his third career start, seeing even just incremental progress, right. what does that do for his confidence? Yeah, that's. I, I think it's it's building. You can see. I think regardless of of the opponent, when you play in Ohio Stadium, and um, you know you get your second start. You know, you have to see how people are going to react. I thought he was much more poised in this game than the first one, and I think that's natural. So, again, you know, we'll see if we can we can build on that. Uh, but like you said, bigger challenges ahead. Uh, far right, Adam King, WBNS. Uh, what will Devin's role be moving forward? Do you know? Is it, I mean, do you want to get him out there still scheduled drives, or is it just whenever you get a chance? Yeah, we'd, we'd like to. We'd like to get him, get him out there and play. I think it depends on the opponent, depends on, uh, the strategy, um, there's a lot that will come into play each week. I don't think it will be something that we do the same thing every week, but um, we'll look at the opponent, we'll look at the situation, we'll look at the schematics of it all and, and see where he fits. How important is this week for Kyle to get out there and have one full game as the starter before going to South Bend? I think it's important for everybody to play well this week. You know, we, we have to keep upgrading and keep playing. Um, you know, Kyle's no different, but you know, I think you know, we all want to have a great week of work and we all want to keep getting better. and. Um, you know, when, now we're getting into game three, so you know, want to keep building and growing. I think it's a really important week for us. Uh, fifth row, uh, right, uh, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Raw. Brad, when you review the film, uh, what did you like from the offensive line, and what still concerns you about those, like, those five? Players? Yeah, I, I thought the protection overall was solid. I think they gave uh, Kyle, um, you know, some good time. Uh, Got to keep building on that. I thought their 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 effort and their finish was was much better, and uh, you know, there was some some good plays where I thought we came off the ball. Um, but, you know, again, overall consistency is something that we're working on. And, you know, we've got to get better. But um, there was some improvement there. But, you know, we expect on third and one, third and two, third and three to, to execute, to get first downs. And, um, you know, there was a couple couple penalties in there as well. Um, so we've got to clean those things up. With Josh specifically, I mean, if he shows progress in blocking, but then has the penalties, how do you keep his mind right and make sure that he knows that, hey, you're still on track to do some things that we want you to do? Yeah, it's, it's constant communication, and that's you know that's on us as coaches to make sure that we're doing the right things that he can do, and, and allowing him to to play free and and not you know worry about making mistakes, but at the same time um, you know think clearly and and be able to you know put his best foot forward, his be put his best play on the field. You know, if we're doing too many things that we got to cut back, if we're not doing enough to put him in a situation to be successful, then we have to look at that, um, and, and he has to just keep growing, but. The more he plays, the better he's going to be. The, the talent's there. Far right, Rob Aldis, Columbus Dispatch. Brian, you've expressed uh, some frustration several times now about the, the shortening of the game, the fewer the plays. That's not changing. If you had a chance to talk to your staff about like what can you do differently to take advantage of this, uh, I, I think it's just on a week-to-week -week basis. I think you know we're we're in for a different challenge this week. You know, this week you're going to see a team that throws the ball a lot more, plays faster. Uh, different challenge. Um, so we'll just take it on a week to week basis. And um, I mean, listen, the bottom line is, you know, if we get off the field or we convert on third downs, then, then we're moving more efficiently. And that's that's going to be the goal. But we do talk about what teams, you know, goal is on each side of the ball and and how they you know plan to attack us. And so, 
you know, we have to adjust and adapt based on who we're playing. And this this week will be a different challenge. You said also that it's um, guys deserve to play. That's got to be hard as a coach when guys don't get to play. And it, how, how hard is that? Can you describe talking to guys that don't even get in a game because mainly of this shortened game? Yeah, I think they understand, but um, but but they want to get on the field. They, they came here to play, and um, you know we want to get them in the game. And you know the guys that deserve to. You know, there's there's some guys that are still young that are working their way up, and and the goal is that by the end of the season we have you know really good depth at all positions, um, and so that's that's where the growth during the season and the work that we have to put in we're going to be a lot look a lot different team now than we are in, in a couple of weeks and, and vice versa. So, um, you know, I, I think that it's going to be important to try to get as many guys in the game as we can, but at the same time, you know, we got to. We got to get the guys who are starters and the first string guys in there to get enough reps to, to continue to build. Second row right, Bill Landis, Rivals, the podcast. Ryan, is, is there anything that can make a, an offensive line sort of more adept to zone schemes versus gap schemes or, or, or vice versa? And have you observed anything about your line relative to that in these first two games? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a good question. Some teams, like you said, some guys are built more. Uh, for gap schemes, you know, they're just the, the size of the guys, you know, usually the bigger, stronger guys are a little bit more of of the gap schemes, um, you know, more athletic teams usually do a little bit more of the zone schemes. I think our guys can do both. Uh, I think they have the size and the athleticism to do both. And when you can change up what you're doing against the defensive line where, you know, one time you're, you're down blocking on them, the next time you're really, you know, zone reaching them and creating space, um, you're putting them in stress. But um, and that's only if we're fitting them up right and we're hitting them right. Um, I, did, I do think there was some, some good hits on Saturday. I, I do, but, but not nearly consistent enough. It, it seemed like compared to the Indiana game, maybe you guys were a little more inside run focused against Youngstown State. Um, is that just a product of the opponent, or are you just trying to work through some stuff? Is that perhaps something you think you guys might do better? Like, what was the thought process? Yeah, I, I, once in a while, you've got to just say, hey, we're going we're gonna to run the ball up the middle and, and, and make four yards and, and then do it again. That's part of growing a team and building a team. I thought, you know, we did a nice job a couple of times of getting the ball to the perimeter and creating some explosive plays. But ultimately, you know, uh, we also have to run the ball inside the tackles. So there's a little bit of both going on there, especially in a game early in the season. Fourth row middle, Tony Gerben, Buckeye Mellow. Ryan, in the, uh, the process of getting your starting quarterback, how much of an impact do you think that has had on third downs and offensive efficiency? Um. Yeah, I mean, the quarterback is a huge part of that. Um, as we know, the quarterback really gets judged on third down in the red zone. Um, opportunities to throw the ball down the field, um, you know, and play action and, you know, to cre you know create explosives, decision making. But, but yeah, I mean, that, that's going to be a big part of it and the timing and, and all that. But I, I think that there's been enough this year in that third and medium, three, four, two, that, that we haven't converted on that uh, we got to help them with. Has that been more of an offensive line thing, or like what? I don't, I don't think you can point to one thing, but but that's that's what happens, you know, when you have uh, some inexperience there. You know, it's one one thing here, one thing there, and you know, you add those up, then you know, you're not as efficient as you'd like to be. So, uh, we've met as a group, we've talked about it, and uh, we're going to try to put, give them a good plan and go after it again this week. Right next door, Pat Murphy, twenty four seven sports. Going back to Rob's question about the the clock and the rules, <clears throat> you obviously dealt with similar rules in the NFL. I know it's been quite a while since you were there, but how, how much can you draw back on, on your experiences of being an offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach, that to, to help? Yeah, I just think it's a totally different game. You know, even um, just, you know, I threw on a little bit of that, that Jets game last night and just watched it. It just, you know, you break the huddle at 15 and, you know, just the numbers aren't as, aren't as big in, in, in that league as it is in college. And uh, it's just very different that way. You know, they play the game in the middle of the field, um, you know, you really don't see any teams in the NFL go really go no huddle. Most of them are huddling for the most part. And so um, it's just different. You know, there's just not as many plays in the NFL uh, as there is in college. Uh, more games in the regular season. So um, just different. Yeah. Second row middle, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Some more on the clock thing. As a play caller, when, I mean, you have certain things that you're trying to get done on the drive, certain things you want to get done in a game. How have the clock rules maybe affected what you want to run on game day? And also, like, do you feel like when you call something, it has to be more maximized than maybe in the past? Yeah, yeah. And there's no question. It has to. We've talked about that as a team. It has to be more efficient. You know, we got to come out of the gates and be efficient. I thought we did that 
um, you know, in the first quarter, we took the ball and uh, we were, you know, how does it affect a game like it was on Saturday? You're trying to play fast. You know, we're trying to play fast. They're trying to play slow. That's just kind of the back and forth of it all. Um, you know, when we start getting into you know some different games down the road, that's not going to be the focus. You know, the focus will be on winning the game. But, um, you know, yeah, we, we tried to get as many plays as we possibly could. Your number is just your efficiency numbers are maybe down from the last couple of years. Two, two, it's only two game sample, so I have to understand that. But is the lack of efficiency just trying to adjust to the play clock, the clock situation, or is that an execution problem? No, I just think that there's less there's less at bats right now, um, and it, it's also based on our opponents and, and the way that they they played the game. You know, it was a little bit probably like playing, you know, um, some of the service academies. You know, they're running the ball and. And that's that's smart by them. That's good by them. It's just a different style of game. You know, I think about maybe some of the games in the past that we were playing against no huddle teams that threw it, sort of like the team that you know we're going to play this week. So it'll be, um, you know, but it'll be a different feel we think this week if things go as uh, as planned. Uh, third row left, Dan Holt, Eleven Warriors. Ryan, and for two games the defensive ends haven't had any sacks. Is there anything you're seeing on film of just why they're not being able to get to the quarterback right now? Um, again, I think it's just going to be a different situation this week with Western Kentucky. Um, they're going to throw the ball a lot more than our last two opponents. And, you know, they're going to play fast and try to spread us out. I think they do an excellent job. I mean, it's going to be a big, a big uh, challenge for our defensive line. It's going to be a challenge for our defense. Um, you know, they do a great job on defense and, and try to ch change up the look. So schematically, we're going to get, we'll get stressed out. So, I mean, this is a good challenge for us. And, um, I think we'll have a better feel about that coming out of this game. How important do you think it is for the success of this defense going forward for those guys to be getting pressure on a consistent basis? Yeah, um, it, it, everything starts up front on both sides of the ball. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, the defensive line and Larry takes a lot of pride in is getting the pressure on the quarterback. So um, there's still going to be an opportunity this week doing that because of how much they throw the football and, and they have a really good quarterback and a really good scheme. So, um, you know, it's and it, and it, it goes hand in hand with the coverage. You know, I mean, if, if the coverage is really strong, then the, you know the quarterback has to throw the ball or hold the ball longer. Um, you know, if the coverage is loose, the ball comes out a little sooner. You know, and it's the same thing with the D line. You know, they have to, you know, rush. You know, if they if they're not getting to the quarterback, he can hold on to it longer. You know, they they have to work together. Um, and so, you know, again, um, different approach this week than what we've seen in the last couple. Far left, Whitney Hardy. Ryan, you just talked about some of the ways Western Kentucky is very impressive. Um, of course, you're not going to overlook a team, but with Notre Dame next week and what this Western team can do, how dangerous are they at this point in your season? Well, I, I think, you know, for us, we, we know, you know, areas that we have to improve, and, and we have some guys that haven't played a whole bunch of football, and then we have, you know, some other guys who, you know, really are looking forward to take the next step in their development. So, uh, you know, I don't see it as that at all. Um, you know, we're just, we're not there right now. We, we got to keep building and growing and um, in all three phases. So I uh, don't see it like that at all. We got a lot of respect for what they do and, um, you know, watch the way they played Auburn last year. And I mean, they're, they'll put stress on us. So, you know, we, we got an opportunity to go out and, and, and try to play our best game of the year. And that's really what matters. And then we'll go from there. For those who don't know much about Western Kentucky, what about head coach Tyson Helton and what they do offensively just really impresses you? Uh, probably that they work off of each other. You know, you can you can clearly see there's a plan on both sides of the ball and what they want to do. They they want to throw it and score a whole bunch of points, and um, and, and the defense you know kind of works with the offense the way that they're they're set up. Um, so uh, impressed with that. You know, they they have an identity. Just to clarify, by, by naming Kyle the starter, how does that change the practice? week. I assume Devin said they were still splitting reps pretty much 50-50 last week. How does that change? And what, how do you envision that helping Kyle be better? Yeah, well, I think first off, it, it you know, gives Kyle uh, first off peace of mind that I think, you know, he, he realizes that he is the starter and he's, he's earned that opportunity. Um, secondly, he, um, you know, will receive, you know, more of the reps. Um, you know, Devin will still get, you know, reps in practice. He'll get reps with the ones. But uh, you know, Kyle will get a little bit more than he, than he has the last couple of weeks. And I think it's good for, for the team to have that distinction, to know that, that Kyle right now is the starter. You said back in you know, spring, or maybe it's even as early as February, when you were talking about this process, that you were looking for a special treat. What's common for a special treat? I mean, I, I think right now, um, you know, it, it would be consistency overall. Just, 
you know, um, we've talked about managing the game in terms of making routine plays routinely, uh, not making bad plays worse. And then we have an opportunity to go make that play on third down in the red zone. We've got to go make it. And I think he's starting to learn how that works, how the game works, the preparation and those type of things. And, and, and if we can keep building on that, then I think you'll see more and more play. Um, you know, accuracy is, is another thing that, you know, he's, he's been, he's missed a couple throws, but, you know, we see accuracy in him that, that, um, you know, has a, has a chance to be special as well. Uh, from the right, Austin Ward, Rivals, the podcast. Ryan, when you realized or saw the stat sheet, when you saw Travion's carries, what did you think of that? I would love to see uh, him get more, more touches. Yeah. Um, but then again, when I looked at everybody, I wish they had more. Yeah. When you, it's like we spent coming out of the first week, like, well, Marvin's got to touch it more. And then week two, now we're talking about Travion. I realize there are a lot of mouths to feed. And then, you know, the efficiency plays into this as well. How much, when you're building or designing a game plan, are you, do you have it in your mind, X number of touches for somebody? We try to do, okay, uh, let's look at, the schematics of it all and figure out here's a play that we think we run that fits against this defense. We put it up on the board and then and then at the end we'll say, okay, how, how is this all shaken out? You know, is it is it heavy one side or another? And what we're not gonna do is compromise what's best for the team just to make sure that, you know, everyone's touching the ball in a certain game. You saw in the first game Julian and, and Cade got a bunch of touches. The next game, you know, Marv got some more and you know that that's pretty normal uh, of the way it goes. So, um, you know, we, we try to be aware of it, but at the same time, we're not going to let it affect, you know, how we're doing our day to day stuff. Front row, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, have you faced an offense that's at all comparable to the Western Kentucky in terms of just the volume in which they throw over the last few years? Um, I felt like maybe a few years back against Indiana, they were throwing it a bunch, you know, with Penix. You know, I, I feel like. They were throwing it a lot that year. Um, you guys probably remember more than I do, but uh, but this this is a this is a little bit unique. Is there anything you can draw on some of those kind? Of, maybe like just some of Jeff Brom's teams. So is there anything you can like draw on some of those teams you faced before? That I know you don't typically face air raids a ton in the, in, right. in the Big Ten, but is there anything you can draw on those games that can help here? Um, yeah, yeah, and I think Jim has a, probably a little bit more of a background with it being you know coming from the Big Twelve for a couple of years and seeing some of those styles of defense. Uh, and, and our styles of offense and, and going up against them. So um, he's got a pretty good, um, you know, experience with those guys. So uh, had some good conversations with him, and I think he's got a good plan. Uh, far right, Clay Hall, WSYX. Do you think this is good prep for Notre Dame just in terms of Hartman being an accomplished guy? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's a good challenge for our guys. I do. Um, I think it's a good challenge for all of us. Um, so looking forward to getting to work and getting, you know, it, it's a four o'clock game for us. You know, we got the night game the next week. So, um, you know, we played the noon game this this past week. So I think, you know, you're hitting a couple different times. Uh, you're hitting a couple different schemes, um, you know, different styles. You know, we've had a game on the road. So it's been good. It's, it's, it's been a good start for us. But but now, you know, going into the third week, you know, we've got to ratchet it up even more. Are you sounding a warning that, hey, we can't worry about next week today? I just don't think that that's where we're at right now. I just think that we're one day at a time, growing every day. We know we want to play our best football at the end of the season, but we got to get better like now, and 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 that's the message. John, do we BNS? Scheduling gets tougher. What areas do you want to – have you circled this week that you got to be better at? Well, the third down is, is something that just statistically jumps out, um, but it's all areas. I mean, I can't sit here and tell you that we're a finished product in any one area. Um, if you name off all the different areas in the team, we're trying to get better. We know that um, we're not where we need to be. But it's it's like we say, you know, it was 1.0, 2.0. This has got to be 3.0. This has got to be our third version of ourselves. And it's got to improve because now you're on film for two weeks. And, you know, teams do a great job. Coaches do a great job of scheming you up. And um, ultimately, it comes down to playing really, really hard and competing and, and running around and tackling and, and playing with great emotion. You see the improvement you wanted to see in the running game from your old line? Um, no, no. I, you know, uh, pretty high standard. You know, um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you there's anything that I'm, you know, content with right now. We we, we got a long way to go in all areas. We just got to keep growing and building, and and I, I think that's that's a good approach to have. We just stay hungry every week. Uh, fourth row right, Andy Backstrom, Levin Roth. Right, you mentioned last night's NFL game. It's just another reminder that. 
you know, we want to play away playing mm -hmm. for the quarterback. And how did Devin take the message and the distinction with Kyle being the starter? And what do you need to see from his development to know that he's ready to? You know? Yeah, I, I, Devin's a great competitor. Uh, he wants it really bad. Um, and, you know, he, he knows that he's one play away, like you said. And uh, he was great. But at the same time, you know, he's uh, got to get back to work this week and get better in the areas he needs to improve on, you know. And we've talked about it. I, I think it's just the overall consistency for him. You can see it, you know. But uh, he hasn't played a lot, so we're going to try to get him more and more experience. And hopefully the next time he gets out there, you know, he's a little bit more poised and has a feel for the game because uh, the talent is certainly there. Right in front of him, Dylan Davis. You talked about kind of stepping away and trying to have a, more of a hand in everything in this building. <clears throat> I guess three, almost three weeks into the season, how would you grade your ability to do that? Are you even still focused on doing that, or have you kind of reverted back to No, that? no. Um, you know, I think that I'm, I'm definitely doing that um, better and more than I have in the past. But at the same time, you know, we have young quarterbacks, and, um, you know, we, we got to continually work through, you know, the, the, the beginning stages of the season. So, uh, pushing hard in that area as well. Um, long days, but that's okay. That's that's part of the job. But 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 I think um, certainly Quinn Temple has really helped with that a lot. Um, you know, he's taken a lot of those things off of my plate just in terms of the overall management of the building, and then you know having you know Brian and, and Justin and Joe Philbin and Todd Fitch, you know, to try to help out with the offense has done. Um, they've done a really good job of helping me in that area as well. I know you said that it would be easy to do in the off season, but it gets kind of harder yeah. in the season. I guess, have you, does it change at all in these three weeks or has it stayed pretty yeah, good? Yeah, I think so. I think it's changed a little bit, but at the same time, you know, yeah, it's, it's you know, you know what you got to do to get the job done, you know, and to win games. And um, and a big part of that, big part of that has been the way we do things on offense. So, um, you know, going to stick with that. And and the more and more the guys can, can, you know, take things and run, the more that, you know, I'll delegate. Hey, thanks, Jerry. Uh, Ryan, w when did the decision hit you that this was the time and the moment? Were you eating dinner, eating breakfast? Were you watching video? I'm talking about about naming uh, Kyle the bonafide dude. I, I felt like it after the game. I just didn't feel like it was the right time until we have reviewed the film. But uh, I just felt like after the game, there was just an overall poise and consistency that um, just – I think let us all to think that okay, Kyle's Kyle's the guy right now. Yeah, and he seemed to throw the ball with more authority on yeah. Saturday. Do you agree with that? I do. I mean, yeah. yeah, he had some that came out with um, a lot more confidence for sure. Yeah, and uh, the sneak peek you've taken at least of WKU uh, and their offense, Austin Reed, particularly the quarterback. What jumps out at you about him? The way he led the nation in passing last year, pretty close. Yeah, um, his story is pretty interesting. Where he came from, and you know. Um, you know, just in terms of, you know, wasn't a highly recruited guy, he's had to earn everything he's had to get. And that's, that's usually uh, the right recipe for a really good quarterback. But he's accurate. He gets the ball out of his hand. Uh, you can tell he's very, very intelligent, has good vision. So a uh, really good challenge for our defense this week. I mean, they're, they're going to come after us. And, and um, you know, I think, you know, for the D-line, for the secondary, all of the above schematically, um, looking forward to getting it going this week and, and seeing how it plays out on Saturday. Ryan, there was a lot of focus all offseason about leadership, the committees, the, the finding guys to step up and be that guy. A lot of the guys that have been picked, Cade, uh, Xavier, Tommy, these are guys that are quiet guys on the outside looking in. You guys obviously see practice. You see a lot more than we do. Is there any concern that there's not a vocal enough presence in the locker room or on the field? It seems like there's just a little bit of a flatness at times, because that's just the way those guys are. It's not a knock, but is there something more you're looking for? I think Tommy uh, does have a, a pretty strong voice out there on the field. I, I agree with you. I think off the field, he's a man of few words. But on the field, I mean, you can feel him. You can hear him. Uh, he has passion. He has intensity. I mean, he runs the defense out there. Uh, I think Mike Hall, really, you know, you feel him. You, you feel him on the field. Uh, I think Travion Henderson has done a really good job. I mean, you feel his intensity every day at practice. You feel him on the field. Um, and so that's great. And, and I think the more, you know, some of the other guys, the more that they continue to build confidence this season, you'll start to see that more and more. Um, but but I th I, it's there. Um, I like the way Cade played in the first game. I like his um, his leadership out there. Um, you know, I think s sometimes with the offensive line, you're used to having maybe some older guys there. When you have three new starters there, you know, you don't get 
uh, as strong of, of leadership because they're still trying to figure it out. Um, I think as they get more and more confident, you know, you'll start to see those guys step up. Do you feel that like any part of that is based on the early season schedule and, and maybe not having people looking ahead to something bigger? I mean, these games are hard to get up for for everyone, but they are playing football at Ohio State, so you expect that they're out there with the right approach, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't really felt that, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep pushing. We know that the challenges are coming, and it's only going to get harder and harder, and the intensity is going to have to ratchet up for sure. Brian, you mentioned Kyle's consistency, obviously, but how much of this decision was wanting to stick with one quarterback so you can maximize the fewer possessions and the fewer plays that you do have? Um, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I I didn't really look into it that much, but um, yeah, I mean, the more we can get those guys out there and the more reps they take, I know the only the better they're going to get. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the more he can play, I, I, I see it. You know, I, I saw the, the progression from week one to week two, and hopefully we'll see the same progression in week three. Uh, third row middle, Andy Andrews, Lebanon Warriors. Uh, yeah, you, you, I mean, you've been talking a lot about consistency, I guess. Is that, you know, the prevailing, you know, message for the team this week right now? And how, how do you build consistency through, I, I mean, practice and, and just uh, how, how do you keep working on that? Well, there's a lot that comes with that. Um, you know, there's first off, there's just, you know, overall, you know, bringing it every day in terms of your physicality. You know, you have the physical part of it, you know, just the rest you have and, and being physical in practice. You know, this is a violent collision sport. It's a combat sport. So, I mean, you got to physically bring it every day and you have to be felt on the field. That's the first thing. The second thing is mentally you have to prepare at a high level. It's like taking a test every day of practice and you know, if you're not prepared mentally to go out in the field and, you know, utilize the techniques and the tools or execute the scheme, then, you know, you're not going to be consistent. And then, and then part of that is like the soul and the spirit of it all is just the overall, like, you know, I got to bring this thing because, you know, we're competing at the highest, highest level there is in all of sports right now. And so those are the three areas where you have to bring it every day. And, you know, we, we want, more consistency in that area. Now, that's not unique to this team, but that is that is a message. Right behind him, Brendan Kulik. Buckeyes now on something. <laughs> <laughs> Sports <laughs> Illustrated. Oh, okay. oh, that, that thing. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> you well, didn't want me to say what I was saying. We did. You almost, yeah, yeah that, well, that, well, that's because that was, yeah, okay. <laughs> Ryan, you, you were pretty straightforward with us uh, after Indiana when we were talking to you about success. You said, hey, 250 on the ground, 300 through the air, want to score 50 points. Like, that's kind of how you define it. But I'm, I'm curious, like, in a, in a week like this, aside from that, how do you define success this week? Like, what things are you looking at saying, hey, if we're going to, if, if version 3.0 of us is going to be really good, this, that, this, that, whatever it might be. How do you define success this week? Well, I, I think the first thing is you want everyone to grade out a champion. You've heard us talk about that. So, you know, we look at effort, we look at execution, we look at different things. And if guys grade over 80%, then, then they're a champion. I mean, that's a tangible thing you can look at. And, you know, if you have you know, your starters or you have a good portion of your offense or defense, um, you know, grade out a champion, that's probably a pretty good day. If you don't, then – then that's you know, that, that's not the the direction we're trying to go in. Um, so that's that's the job of the position coaches and the unit coaches and the leaders to make sure that their unit is grading out a champion. Um, and and we have to be um, you know hard and hold our standard of what is considered a champion and what isn't. You know because that's ultimately what it comes down to. Now uh, we'll also look at the game and see. You know, how do we do in third downs? How do we do in red zone? We go through all those situations in the team meeting on Sunday. Um, did we win those situations? You know, we look at rushing yards. We look at explosive plays. We look at the red zone. We look at third down. We won most of those. We did not win third medium. So that's an area we need to see an improvement in. But um, so, I mean, those really, if you say tangibly, what are the things? The champions, and then did we win the situations? I asked you last week about receivers in the blocking game, and there was one play in particular that sprung a Mecca for a touchdown where it looked like two receivers blocked three guys to the ground. Are those the kinds of things that you guys show in film sessions that, that hopefully inspire the rest of the team when you see receivers doing stuff like that? Yeah, and we show the good ones, and we show the ones that we need to improve on. Um, 
and, and you know it's part of our, our our meeting on Sunday, and and that was one of the ones that were on. That was a huge play. They, they did a great job. Also, the one on Travion's touchdown, G, Ameka, and Marvin did a really nice job. Three for three on the perimeter. You make those blocks. That's when good turns to great, and uh, that's that was a huge emphasis going into last week. We thought that you know we needed to block the perimeter better. We did that. Got to keep improving. Big challenge. Bigger challenges are coming ahead. But but there was definitely some tangible things that we saw that we showed the guys where if we make those blocks on the perimeter, we get the ball out there. That's a gain of you know two touchdowns. That if you don't make those blocks, they're gains of five and six. So everyone has to do their part on offense. What's the coaching point to Chip Trainer on that on that play? What you know what I mean? The the touchdown was called back for holding. Um. Again, I got, I got feedback that, you know, that probably was not a hold, you know, so I don't know. I don't know what to say. That's all I wanted to hear. Yeah. <laughs> got time for just a couple more. Front row, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. This is not my question, but the way you answered that, you're getting a lot of those, aren't you? After the fact questions. Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess it's part of the game, you know. Well, we'll worry about just, you know, getting our hands tighter and inside and, and doing a better job on third down. No question. Uh, Kyle is a pretty – flat line, even keel kind of guy. What was his reaction when you told him after all these months? <laughs> yeah, won, yeah, you know, Kyle, like you said, is not someone that shows a ton of emotion all the time. Um, he's excited, but uh, but he wasn't exactly jumping on the table when he asked me. I think he was, that was more of a confirmation. I think he, he felt like the time was right and that, um, and I think he was right about that. This morning? Uh, this, uh, yeah, this morning. Yeah. And you mentioned peace of mind for him. How much is peace of mind for you that you don't have to think about this anymore? That, We've got our guy. We've got West Kentucky, which will be a challenge. We've got Notre Dame in the Big Ten. We needed to have this done by now. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I guess it's one less thing. Still got a lot of other things to worry about, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think it's um, it's played itself out. I, you know, I think if we sat here two weeks ago, we said, you know, we'll get a chance in two weeks to at least have two games to look at and see where it's at. And I think that's kind of how it went. You never know how it's going to go, right? It could could go a million different ways you know you even look at how the game went last night I mean unbelievable but um so you don't know you don't have a crystal ball but here we are I think it's it's you know played out the way and then also there's also practice and we've seen enough in practice to lead us to believe that this is the right thing to do and final question second row uh Doug Lamarine's Kings of Columbus Brian I don't I guess Western Kentucky's maybe not pure air raid anymore but it's on the tree yeah I guess right sure have you Studied air raid much? Dabbled in it? Have you what? Do you, have you ever thought of instituting it more into what you do, or how much have you? What What do you think of that philosophy? Uh, it, it's an identity. It is. Um, you know, there's there's pluses and minuses to everything, um, and and they do a great job of creating space and getting the ball out of their hand quickly and wide receiver screens and the, the throws off of them and they, they they're creative about some of their trick things that they do and so we got to be on our game. They're going to challenge us. Um, but yeah, you, we look at everybody. I mean, I probably look at too many people, but um, always looking for great ideas of how teams attack others. Um, but ultimately, you have to get back to what your identity is, you know. And um, and so, you know, there's certain things that um, are trends in different leagues, you know. And certainly in the Big Ten, there's there's things that um, and teams and you know, weather and just different things you have to consider. And I know offensively, you want to be efficient and explosive. Right, yes. that's a given. But that that slider, right? If it's, is it right in the middle all the time? We want to be efficient and explosive, or or philosophically, do you? Is there a way that you lean if we're gonna, or does that change with your quarterback, with your players, with your team? In the game, in the game, yeah. I think all those things you have to consider for sure. Um, you know, you, you every every opponent's different, every situation's different. You know, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, and those are the decisions you try to do the best you can to put your team in the best situation ultimately to, to reach your goals. Um, you know, sometimes it may not be the best thing at the time or seem that way, but um, you try to do everything you can. And um, it's our job as coaches to do that. And, um, you know, sometimes you want to see how certain guys are responding. Sometimes you want to see, you know, uh, give somebody an opportunity to prove in a game that they can or they can't. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to be a little bit stubborn in certain areas to find out. But, and sometimes it's exciting, sometimes it's disappointing. But that's part of building a team and building an offense and figuring out what you can and can't do. Because, like we said, going into week one and week two, you make assumptions. 
and some assumptions are proven to be true, other assumptions are proven to be wrong, and then you keep building from there.